Notice those words, for the hour, the hour of his judgment is come. What does that mean? Well, the verses we just read are right here at the end of Daniel's 70th week. Angels preaching the gospel to every kindred and nation and tongue. And they're going to worship God. And when he says, for the hour of his judgment is come, is the hour when Jesus Christ is returning. And when the, God's judgments are in the world, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness and they're rejoicing. And what exactly is going to happen at that day? I'm going to show you a verse you've always misunderstood. It's in the book of Jude. Uh, let me do this again. Jude. Chapter, chapter, well, there's only one chapter, so it's verse 14. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. Why? To execute judgment. Now that sounds ominous. That sounds ominous with the brain of Christendom inside your head. But what is the judgment? Notice, to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. When, God, when Jesus Christ returns and judgment comes to the earth, God will convince the ungodly of, of their ungodly deeds and, and their ungodly speeches. And in, in essence, what will he be doing? He'll be correcting them. And when his judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. And all the nations of the world are going to rejoice at that. Look at Revelation 15, 3. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee. Now, why is the writer of the Revelation saying thy ways are just and true and who shall not fear thee and glorify thy name and that all nations shall come and worship before thee? Why is he saying that? Notice, for thy judgments are made manifest. When God's judgments are in the world, the people will learn righteousness and that's why I said at the beginning of this message, the time of God's judgments are a time of blessing and a universal rejoicing, a time to be longed for and hoped for, a time to be looked forward to with great anticipation and the highest hopes of joy. Because we never understood that God's judgments were his teaching righteousness. We never thought that. We never learned that. I mean, look at verse 4. For all nations shall worship before him. Really? Does the Bible teach that? Does the Bible teach that all nations shall worship before him? Well, I don't know. How about this? Isaiah 2, 2. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations. This is the, this is the millennial reign of Christ and all nations shall flow into it. When we say that the gospel is good news, we mean the gospel is good news. God means the gospel is good news. The gospel is not bad news. Psalm twenty-two, twenty-seven: 27. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord. And all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before him. For the kingdom is the Lord's and he is the governor among the nations. That's what's coming. Isaiah 66, 23, and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, 
and from one Sabbath to another. Shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. Psalm 86, 9. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. For thou art great and doest wondrous things, for thou art God. Isn't this what the angel was talking about at the birth of Christ? Luke 2, 9, And lo, the angel of the Lord came unto them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Notice, which shall be to all people. The angels, Jesus Christ comes into the world, and the angel says, Listen, this is great news for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Can you see all the verses we just looked at? I would be excited if I were you. But I'm going to close with this today. Something that Paul said on Mars Hill to the pagan Athenian heathens that were there. There was an inscription to the unknown God. And he said, whom you ignorantly worship, let me tell you who he is. Then he talks about the God which made heaven and this and that and in whom we live and move and have our being. And then Paul says in Acts 17, 31, because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness. He will judge. What, is, what happens when God's judgments are in the earth? The inhabitants of the world learn righteousness. Yeah, yeah. That's what judgment means. He will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. Judge the world in righteousness. Before you understood that when God's judgments are, when his judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness, that would scare you. It was petrifying. But now we know that when God's judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the, of the, of the world will learn righteousness. Acts chapter 17, 31 is the promise of blessing unto all men. That's what that is. Didn't we read a moment ago that Jesus Christ will bring forth judgment unto victory? Victory, not disappointment, not sadness, not fear, not trepidation. And I'm going to tell you that the beautiful thing about what we looked at today is that we who are saved by grace through faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have a part in this whole thing in the ages to come. I can't get into that right now because our time literally is up. But you can be assured that there is a reason why you are saved today by grace, it's more than the fact that you're just saved from hell. It's more than that. We talk about Ephesians chapter 2, 7, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. Who's he going to show that to in the ages to come? What are the ages to come? Throughout the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, we have a part of showing the rest of the world who are learning righteousness what God did by grace, and he's going to do the same thing for them. Never thought of it that way. I know that. I understand that. This is new. A lot of this is new, but it's not new to God. It's been there forever. But there's a reason why we are the people who are saved today by grace, because we're going to participate in God's program. So I'm just going to close with one more thing. I just want to remind you of this. God has a plan. God has a plan 
that is bigger than what you and I have been led to believe. Okay, I learned the same things you learned. I haven't always been standing behind this place. I sat in pulpit for years. I mean, in, in pews for years. And I learned what you learned. I was there. There were so many things I would go, huh? You know? And then I found out that things that were written aforetime were written for our learning. And that those things were examples for us. Here's the verse I want to close with, okay? I hope you take this with you. Because this is God's plan for you. This is God's plan for everyone. Israel are an object lesson. This was written, the verse we're going to read was written to Israel. But there are, there are our example. What God says about them is going to happen to every nation in the world. We, don't, we, we never looked at it that way, but that's exactly what God's plan is. You're going to learn more about that in the next coming week, those of you who stick around. But uh, here's the verse. Jeremiah 29, 11. God says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. There's something amazing in the end of this journey. We may not understand all the suffering that is in the world right now. We do not understand it. But if you remember, Jesus Christ was perfected through the things which he suffered. And Jesus Christ is the prototype of every single person that God ever created. Every single person God created is going to be conformed to the image of his son. Now, I, don't, you, I know you don't understand everything that I just said right there, but there, I got a whole message coming up just on that subject about how what he went through had a purpose. You know, I've often said in the past that Jesus Christ, God became a man the pre-existent, eternal Son of God became a man so that he could identify with man. No, I said, I've been saying that wrong for years. He became a man, went through the things he suffered so we could identify with him and understand we're following in his path. We're following in his steps. We're going to end up like that ourselves. That is God's plan for his creation. If you think God in the beginning created man and let that happen in the garden for no reason, you don't know. You don't know the plan of God. God's plan is that what he started in that garden is going to be completed the, same, the exact way that he wants it to happen because he works all things after the counsel of his own will. Everything that has happened happens and it's headed in that direction. And it's a great direction. And it's a great hope. God is in the saving business. But we have no idea. I told you I was going to ask you a question that had five answers. I actually found six now that, have an, that, 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 that the question has answers to. That, that one question has an answer to. But I'm not going to talk about it today because we're, really our time is done. But... Today where we live, God sent his son for us to hang, bleed, and die on a cross. We're, we're a unique space of time in the word of God. We're in the dispensation of grace. We're the only people, well, over the past 2,000 years, we're the only people who've lived in that period of time where God is not imputing your sin to you. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 5. That's what Paul said. I didn't say that. He said that. But this period of time has a purpose in the whole plan. Because in the whole plan, we will be taken out of here and we will be brought into this place when God is fulfilling the rest of his plan and we are going to be an example of how God works.
in grace. And everybody, because you and I, you know we're all going to be conformed to the image of Christ. It's not happening today. There's not one person conformed to the image of Christ right now. But it is going to happen. But what we don't understand is God's plan. That's God's plan for all the nations of the world. Next week, like I said, this is just an introduction to this subject. But next week, I'm going to show you so many verses in your Bible that substantiate and validate this message from today. Just, that's all I'll be doing next week. I won't even be talking, I'm just going to be showing you. From Genesis to Revelation, the most unbelievable verses in your Bible that you ever saw. It overwhelms me when I read all those verses, and there are many. I think it will, take, it will probably take the whole hour just to go through the verses one at a time, at a time, at a time, at a time. And you will be blessed. I mean, those of you who want to know what the Bible says, you will be blessed. Those people who want to stick with the Augustonian view of God and, his, and this, this mad monster who wants to send everybody to hell, you're not, you're not going to see these truths. You're not going to see it. But those of you who want to believe your Bible and believe the words on the page, and now you have this new understanding, this most important understanding of judgment is Isaiah chapter 26, that when his judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. That's God's plan. That is God's plan. And nobody's going to undo it whether they believe it or not. It doesn't matter to me if you don't believe it. I told my wife, I told my wife at lunch Sunday, uh, last Sunday, that we may just go back to my office at home and just have church from there forever after this. Because if people can't enter into an understanding of this, I'm not going to be responsible for that. Because, you know, if, if people want to leave, you, you, you're very welcome to leave if that's what you want to do. But that's how it's going to be. If I have to go back and just teach from my office, I will. But this is, I'm seeing what the Bible says. I'm more interested in the Bible than what religion has taught for years. Because this kind of teaching that we've had, it affects the conscience of man. It affects how you look at human beings. It affects how you treat your neighbor. You know, this whole scary thing that is Christendom is not healthy for humanity. And look at what it has done in the world. And look at all the religions in the world because men do not understand Isaiah chapter 26. And it's not, that's, not, that's just one verse. But look at the verses we looked at today. So I just hope that your hearts will be open and attentive and you'll want to learn what the Bible says. Because I'm just sticking with this from now on. That's it. I don't want to know anything else. But anyway, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, so... This is a good day to believe that Jesus Christ died for you. That he was raised from the dead. He was buried and raised from the dead. And you trust that. That's it for the forgiveness of your sins. Let's pray. Our gracious God, our Father, I'm thankful this morning that we can open the scripture and look at the word of God and just the word of God and remove everything that has nothing to do with God and his purpose for mankind. I pray these things today in that name that is above every name, the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.